Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel, Hazel and Aka Design. Let me begin by apologizing for my voice that continues to be hoarse. Still seem to be fighting that cold. Um, I guess uh, anecdotally, I keep hearing about people who get sick and uh, cough and whatever for, you know, a month at a time. So don't know what's going on out there in the world, but we will persevere. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you if you are a new subscriber. I really should um, start a bit of a, uh, a list so I can properly greet uh, the newest of you. Uh, I tend to do shout outs to people who have been here a while, but um, it would be nice to welcome the brand new people as well, especially if you've given me your first name in um, your comments. Okay, let's start. Um, you know that I was on a bit of a stamping uh, rampage for a few reasons. Um, it creates, it adds another dimension to any decorating the person does. It uh, obviously can decorate plain pages in a journal. It um, allows us to use up, not use up, but use the things we've invested in, um, you know, stamps. Most of us have far too many. Um, I'm happy to say that most of mine have been thrifted so that, um, you know, it didn't really cost an arm and a leg. But, but still, it doesn't matter how much we've spent on something. If it's taking up space and not being used, it, it's still not a good investment. So what, okay, let me back up even further. I have book pages till the cows come home. And given that we sold our herd about 15 years ago, maybe more now, I don't think the cows are coming home. So <laughs> I've got to start doing something with book pages. So a long time ago, I saw an inspiration type video done by Carrie the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, Carrie the Crafter. I think he lives in Wales or someplace like that. Very talented guy. And it was such a simple idea. I have done it, but I don't think I've ever done it on video. So in essence, he was using uh, stamps on book page. Now I have a pile of uh, pages that I salvaged out of books and put a thin layer of gesso on. So just a, a, a level of uh, preparation and protection for the paper, but it also serves to push the text back into the background. So I thought, okay, let's use some of these book pages. So what I did before turning on the camera was just gather a bunch of stamps that were um, easy to get at. I'm still looking for the perfect ha-ha <laughs> solution uh, for storing stamps. And it's not easy considering some are the old-fashioned ones, wood-mounted. Some are, uh, it, whoops, some are sort of this sort of thing. So it's, um, haven't, haven't figured out the, the, the solution just yet. Anyway, what I, oh, and I used, um, I just grabbed a few of my archival ink pads. Shadow gray is pretty darn light, but I thought in some cases, maybe that's what I want. I also used coffee for the brown tones, jet black for the black, and night sky because this may be my favorite, and it works so reliably every single time. I don't know why some colors, some pads are just better than others, but it seems to be the way. So, um, well, I'll go through, I'll show you the stamped images rather than the stamps themselves. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So, um, this one book in particular, I think was about uh, drug addiction or something. So, not necessarily... Um, <laughs> I don't know how I ended up with it, if it was a grab bag type purchase or what. But anyway, um, definitely a good one to disguise with gesso and additional layers. So what I did was I used, well, you'll see, I, I, this is kind of an experiment. I used stamps that are largely an outline, like this poppy, this woman. I used stamps that were, I've, I've had this stamp probably for, this might have been the only stamp I bought back in the day when I took one card making class. So that's probably 25 years ago. This has a lot more, um, it's the opposite of an outline. There's a lot more ink that's deposited on the paper. This was just one that was kicking around. It's a thrifted one. This one is kind of a combination of filled in areas and outlines. These trees are clearly solid, but I thought that when it comes to it, I will be able to add something to it. This is a cute little outline stamp of blueberries, I guess. I have a thing about pears. Um, now that pear stamp is also really old, but you can, whoops, you can see that a lot of it is filled in. Now I, I first did it with the gray shadow and then I did it with the jet black and you can see it's, there's, they're both pretty light, but again, I have a method from, I <laughs> presumably have a method to my madness. This teacup is cute. Now, this was the perfect image until I sort of dropped the stamp as I was lifting it up. So it looks like somebody started pouring it. Tried again below, but I didn't quite get the base. And I thought, well, what about this beautiful stamp? This is a really cute one with this flouncy dress. I did that on a few pages. And then I used this corner. It's kind of a delicate little... Um, you know, floral corner. Um, that might have been the gray. This one kind of went cockeyed. Oh, and I should say that I have this foam, fun foam or whatever it's called, pad on my desk. More poppies, more blueberries. So let's just go on with the idea. What Carrie showed was augmenting and finishing these things up by adding some watercolor to them. So I've assembled um, some brushes. Um, I have a pot, well, a jar of water. I have a little spray bottle. I have my toilet paper for blotting. And I just pulled up some of my basic, um, uh, whatchamacallit, watercolor pads or uh, what, do you, what do you call these tins now I don't remember what brand this is but it is it well back in the day it was affordable and it's made in England so it's not really a kid variety this one is pelican um, you know cost a bit more money this is the koi watercolors and this one, these are metallic, so we'll see. I don't know exactly what I'll use, but I do have all of these near, nearby. Um, maybe I'll go with the Pelican for now. This space is closing in around. I do have, you know, Winsor Newton and, and other artist quality paints, but that's not necessary today. And it's also to convince you, what the heck is going on here? It's also to convince you that um, you don't need to spend a great deal to make this idea work for you. 
We all have book pages. We all have stamps of some sort. So let's combine the two and see what we can create. So maybe let's do something simple like the poppy to begin with. So typically a poppy, um, actually maybe if I can do this without creating a mess, I'll just activate the, the, uh, the pan here, the pan colors. Won't be needing them all, I'm sure, but save a lot of dipping. Okay, so I'm going to obviously pick up some red. I'll just wet my brush. Blot a wee bit, pick up some red, and just lay in some color. Now, of course, this is not going to... Um, it's not going to be as though we were painting on watercolor paper for sure because it's just not that kind of paper so it's going to be more uh, it won't it won't flow as well now i'm not going to uh, you know color it in like a coloring book and I'm not going to care if I go beyond um, the, uh, you know, the outer limits. I'm just laying in some color and then pulling it out to the... And again, it never hurts to leave some white space. So for now, I'm going to leave that as it is and let it dry. I suppose I could add a bit more in to get a little more gradation of color. Put that one aside. Um, let's try the dress. And look how beautiful, whoops. Look how beautifully the night sky worked on there. I don't know why. Why, why, why is that one so, so beautiful? Um, maybe I'll go with the Prussian blue. Again, we can expect that it would be darker, sort of along the folds. And at the waist, I'm just pulling out the, the color a bit. Darker here at her skinny little waist. So I hope that you are motivated. Now, of course, you, you have to, unless you have, um, I should have had a Kleenex here for blotting. Unless you have uh, some pre-gessoed paper or book page, it will take a bit of time to, you know, to prep, to get ready for this. But look what a difference a day makes. Oops, why am I getting water on this part? I didn't want that. Um, yeah, no cleaning. Okay, let's try. I could even drop some purple in here. Okay, we'll do the next one purple. 
And, you know, considering that it's crappy book paper, the isn't the color great? Like, there's saturation there to these paints. And, uh, you know, I have no idea what this would cost now, or I, I don't even remember where I bought them, to be honest. But I do know that... Um, you know, it was it was one of the art teachers that I studied with that that kind of pointed out some of these affordable options. So you don't need to take my word for it. Of course, that's assuming that <laughs> the quality hasn't deteriorated like it has in so many other aspects of our life lives. Maybe let's try a two-tone grass. So doesn't this, and, and I realize I have male subscribers, but doesn't it just make you feel like a, a, a little girl coloring in a, in a coloring book almost? Let's imagine that this was very chiffony. I probably should have waited a bit before doing that. Anyway, this paper is getting pretty wet. So I'd better, maybe I could pick some of this up. Maybe this is a gauzy overlay on her skirt. Okay, we'll set that aside also. Okay, let's try one of the more unusual things. So this beautiful. Now, of course, there's nothing to color in here, but I thought, okay, if we wanted to jazz this up a bit, we could certainly um, lay a wash in. I guess, okay, it could have been done two ways. I could have done a watercolor wash on the paper and then stamped on top of it once it was dry. Or because this is uh, an ink that is not going to move, I should be very safe in doing it now as well. Uh, what do we want? Should we want to go something a little different? Should we try orange? Oh, you know what? I should have picked a, a bigger brush. And again, if I let this sort of fade out here, like an ombre effect... That's almost like Euler's colors. And if you're not, if you don't follow hockey, that's the Edmonton Oilers. They are having uh, a wonderful season so far. I think they got off to a slow start, but then they, they broke a franchise record for uh, most undefeated games in a row. I think it was something like 16. And they're very near the top of the standings in the Western Conference. So... That is uh, wonderful for the diehard fans around here. Um, and of course, that... Oh, let's try the trees. Uh, back in the day, of course, that was Wayne Gretzky's uh, team. And the one where, you know, they had that power, that, that unbelievable uh, lineup... Okay, so what I wanted to do here was just sort of dab in, um, pounce in some leaves. And I'm using, although maybe you can't tell, I'm using a couple of different greens here. We know that this brighter green is more like a spring green when the leaves are just budding. And this bluey green is more like, a, you know, a, 
Now, doesn't that look awesome? I love that. Should I just throw in some of this for the heck of it? You know, because I can't leave well enough alone. Now I feel, here's a Kleenex. Yeah, I wish I wouldn't have done that. But I could add in, we'll knock that ochre color back. Love, love, love it. And of course, you know, with watercolor, I could always go back in. I could overwork it. Um, no, I could go back in after um, it dries if I wanted to, you know, add some darker elements. Okay, well, that worked. So let's do, let's do it again. Anyway, yeah, those were the glory days for the franchise. That was in the 80s with Gretzky, Messier, Coffey, Yari Curry, Grant Fuhrer, people like that. And, um, you know, once a city has seen the best, um, it's always, it's, it's that much harder when you're in a losing skid which seemed to be the way for so long. And of course, we have right now, we, like I'm a part owner, we have uh, the game's best player in Connor McDavid. So um, obviously, we, um, we would like him, well, him, all of them, to um, to win the ultimate prize, which of course is the Stanley Cup. I'm going to stop there because the impulse to keep going is hard to fight. Okay, let's try this pair. Um, so, you know, pairs are a combination usually of... Uh, well, yellow. And kind of a greeny. Ugh, I think I kind of maybe shouldn't have used that ochre. But let's add some green here, maybe save the day. You can see that even though this stamp didn't look like much, um, what a difference adding that bit of color does. And then, of course, we can go in, we can do a bit of a, ooh, that's a lot. Um, let's do something on this leaf. Oh, look how this is bleeding outside the line. Didn't really want that. So if you're quick enough. Oh, yeah, it's lifting. And sometimes re-wetting the paper with clear, uh, well, you know, getting clear Clean water on your brush, you can also lift things like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but on the other hand, I don't want it to look like this is some kind of a, a reject here. Now, another thing I could do when this is dry, and maybe I will do that if this brush is maybe a bit big for that stem. Um, what I can do... Um, when this dries would be to, you know, go in with a, a liner pen of some color, some kind, and do a bit of outlining. I th 
think I could have done better with that. Let's try again. So this time I'm going to do, uh, see how the shadow is more on that side. So let's go in more over there. And you can take your cue from, from the stamp itself, if it's a good one. So you can see that there's no design right there, which means that that's where the, the highlight would be. If we were, you know, if this thing was, was lit. So we want just to leave kind of a, almost like a white spot there because that's where, uh, maybe add a bit of this brighter yellow. Maybe just a little hair. And again, you know, I'm probably, whoa. I'm probably belaboring this more than uh, is necessary. But I'm having fun. You can't underestimate that, the value of that. Um, the danger in using a brush that is too small is that a person starts putzing. That's an official. Uh, undesirable <laughs> behavior. You want it to be as loose and free as possible. And actually, I could add some of that yellow ochre down here as well. And to be honest, this is a great way of getting that artsy feel without having to be an artist. Or without, you know, the pressure of thinking like, oh my goodness, I can't do that. Okay. I definitely like that one better, but again can see that it is bleeding beyond because now the other thing I could do when this is dry is just darken that like with a cast shadow. That one is definitely superior to that one. That doesn't mean that that one can't be used. It just means that it might need a little extra work. Okay, let's try something different now. Let's see what we can do with this. Um, now, again, about all we can do maybe here is bring in, I don't know what. Let's try the bird sienna maybe and see what happens. It's just a matter of sort of building what's on there. Now again, I wouldn't be picking bird sienna if I had used a different color of um, of stamp pad. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if I could make. I just picked up some really sort of pale. Pink that was dried in the lid. Of this. Uh, paint box. Uh, what else would we like to add? 
Maybe just something here. Whoa, that's kind of saturated. Some crud. And again, because I don't even know what all this is, um, I can make it up as I go along. I don't know that I like this. I guess that's a look. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a look. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. feel like I have to do something under her chin there. Whoa. I should have probably just stuck with the, the blue and brown. Why did I have to give her a purple headband? Why? 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 Maybe I need to drop a, a bit of purple in there. And it doesn't look so disconnected. Um, you can see, or at least in this case, um, this is more challenging, this type of step. Okay, this is a slightly different dried up color from my palette. Um, I don't want to play around with this too much. I don't know how long we've been at this, but that's not too bad, I guess. And then maybe I should just pick up more dried up colors. And I, when I'm, I'm talking about these patches here, like that's what I was using for skin just now. I was using an area here for the skin on the first one. But anyway, let's just see what happens if we just add this sort of a, almost a dusty rose type. Almost looks like oh, it belongs in the in the blush uh, journals. If if I had a nickel for every time I've said oh, that would work in the blush journal, and that's why the blush journal is probably becoming five blush journals because I keep finding stuff. Okay. Well, I guess they both have some. Let's give her a wee bit more color right there. And there. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Tiny corner picking up color. I think I shouldn't have touched that. That's what I mean about don't overdo it. Okay, how long have we been at this? Time is flying for me because I'm having fun. Okay, let's do one of these girls. And then a teacup. Oh, well, I've got a butterfly too, a coffee cup. Okay, before we do the girl, let's try this and just see one. Laying a light wash. Oh, let's 
let's pretend those tulips are supposed to be red. Again, using an oversized brush. And again, you know, it, it's whatever, um, whatever um, look you may be going for. This, uh, you know, kind of has an ethereal um, faded. Is that, oh, yeah, that's a tulip, too. This one's stamped very poorly here. Notice how I, I make it sound like it was an act of God or something. I stamped it very poorly here. That is too much. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Originally, I thought if my stamping would have been better, I thought, oh, well, won't that be a nice decorative thing on this page? And then some focal point could be in the middle. Although I suppose um, I guess there's uh, I was going to say there's some green here, but maybe I should do that bow thing instead. Mm, let's try this ultramarine. Just doing very loose. Again, you know, so, so much of watercolor is almost more the suggestion than the actual. Um, sure doesn't help that I did such a poor job with this. But again, to save the day, a person could go in with um, a pen and uh, Add some details. Yoy, that's pretty dark. I should have diluted that color a bit more. Um, because, especially these. Now, see how this has gotten so blobby? The only thing that's going to save that is to go into it after it's dried with a pen and reaffirm the shape. And again, you don't have to like the stamps I picked or the paper or the, I mean the, the paint colors that I picked. You just need to think, oh, I know what I can do with my stamps and my color. Because really that, you know, that's what kind of these videos are about, just planting a seed. Not too many leaves to, oh, I missed that flower. Realize there was another one here. So four, 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 four. Okay, so let's add a few more leaves and then we'll take a look at the things that have dried. And another thing, nobody is going to know, unless of course you tell them, um, if I've added leaves where none existed. Um, what, what you may find too, is that if you, uh, use a lighter color, 
Like, don't worry so much about how it looks when you just stamp it, but think about how it might look when you um, add the paint. And of course, it doesn't have to be paint either. It could be, you know, um, markers or watercolor pencils or whatever your little heart desires. So actually, if I add some green here and even kind of almost like uh, stems. Now, again, knowing that I might have to go in and add some uh, detail back in, that looks kind of cute from, from a distance. <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> okay, let's look at what we have. Um, beautiful. Not quite dry. I don't think I would add any to, anything to this. Now, again, depending on how I choose to use this, like this, because this side is not gessoed, it can't, it would either have to, you'd have to, if you wanted it to be a signature page, like so, you know, the center of a signature, you'd have to add something to the back, either gesso, so it could be written on, or some paper to uh, to make it uh, writable. Happy with that one. Um, I would say that these probably... I don't know. I don't know. I'd say this one maybe needs something. That one <laughs> is what it is. Uh, still love the dresses. I'm glad I added the second color and sort of. That is beautiful. Well, they're both very nice, but that one I especially like. Um, okay, pears. This one is better. This one is not so, not so better. And you can expect that to happen as you, uh, you know, as you work on things. Now again, this is not totally dry. Oops, that's not a. This is just an ordinary pen. I could go in here. And of course, <laughs> as we were warned in, in art class, you're not going to draw in every leaf. And you want it to be airy and open enough for birds to fly through. But just adding those few little squiggles already makes it look more painterly. And this is a pen. And you can see by going beyond, that also adds to the painterly effect. And I'm doing it very loose. Otherwise, a person can fall in the trap of thinking that they're going to draw every single leaf. And that would be foolhardy unless you're doing photorealism and you want, but look how much more dimension this has than this. And we know that sometimes things go kerfluey and you know, a branch or a leaf or something will go where it, you wouldn't think it should go. Okay, again, I don't want to get carried away here. And before you know it, it's too much. Um, won't bother doing it on there. What I should do, though, just as a demo, let's do it on the one I like less. 
let's do a cast shadow. And typically a cast shadow is going to be um, a mauve blue gray. So maybe I'll just pick up a color like this. And it doesn't take much. bit more than that doesn't take much I don't know what this stuff is it's is it I don't think it's a paper coming up so you see how that has grounded the pair it's not floating in space anymore and it also serves to hide my little over, my little whatever that was. <laughs> um, so, and again, I would be, I'm sure, tearing around these things. Okay, a couple more to show you. We've got this. And again, I said that, okay, this is blobby here. Let's see if I can more or less see where the shape of those flowers was. So then somebody looking at this thinks, oh my goodness, that was so, a real artiste must have worked on that one. Look, they're so loose and, and creative. They don't even care if they, if they went beyond the shape. So, oh, I should do some of these little orange guys. Okay, they were just basically five petals. And a little center. Five. One, two, three, four, five. More or less. So that, now I would probably have to redefine the leaves also and then you know do something very swirly um, and almost abstract with this bow I don't know if that's how the bow is supposed to look but it doesn't matter Let's do something over here, and then we call that done. So that is definitely different than these. Not bad or not worse, just different. Like I'd say this needs some definition there too. And I'm using black, but of course I could have looked for, you know, I could do the bow with some blue. Uh, a blue, like a blue marker. And finally, let's show you the poppy. Now, I would go back in and add, um, you know, probably like some Payne's Gray or something to make that center darker. Anyway, guys, that is what we have for today. So, quick, I mean, other than the drying time, and the gessoing time. In a word, they're beautiful. I really hope that you try this. Uh, you've got book pages. I'm sure you either have gesso or white paint uh, that you can thin down if you want it to be obvious that it was a book page. Um, you have stamps, you have watercolors or, or pencil crayons or something. Um, yeah, use, use your stuff. Use it, don't store it. Um, and uh, make some pretty cool um, decorations, embellishments, uh, additional, well, like these, these dresses, they make great focal points. Um, you know, same thing with the poppy. This this, and this might be more like a background 
thing. Trees. I love those trees. Anyway, i got to add some leaves. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like what you're seeing here and appreciate my approach um, to teaching, then by all means, please hit the subscribe button. Um, I appreciate your comments. I respond uh, to them fully. And um, yeah, you guys make you guys make me do this. Thanks. Bye.